hello guys welcome to a new video and in this video we are going to be configuring um uh ospf uh and we're only going to be doing one area which is the backbone area area zero um and we are using a juniper um junos os vsrx image and the vsrx is a firewall um device so we are going to be using three firewalls and we are going to be configuring all three of them to have to be in ospf area zero so the steps that we need to take are uh, the first step that i'm going to take is actually i'm going to configure the interfaces so we are going to configure all the interfaces for the vsrx then i'm going to allow ospf and ping on those vsrx firewalls then i'm going to configure ospf and then we are going to test and do and also do some show commands so you guys can see um, a monitor or SPF. So let's go ahead and start with the configuration. I'm going to start with this VSRX over here. Okay, so this VXRS um, is this one right here. So I need to configure 172.16.2.1 on gigabit interface 0 slash 0 slash 1. And I also want to uh, configure 192.168.1.1 on gigabit GE0. So let's go ahead and do that. I am already in the configuration. So what I want to do, I want to set, you know, we want to set interfaces GE0 slash 0 slash 1. I want to start with um, the local. Um, after that, you want to do the unit 0, which is a logical interface. Then you want to do the family, um, which, I, which IP family you want to do. You want to do init for IPv4. If you want to do IPv6, then you put a 6 right here. But we're doing IPv4. Then you are want to do address. Then you type the IP address that you want. Slash 24. Okay. Then you want to go ahead and set interfaces GE0. Um, slash zero uh, slash zero unit zero family init address uh, 192 that works eight that one that one slash 24 that is great so we have configured those interfaces um, so that should be up and running if we do a run show interfaces there's oop spell that incorrectly terse you should be able um, to see that we have configured GE 0 slash 0 slash 0 um, that 0 um, that's because of the unit that we gave it unit 0 um, that 0 is the sub interface here it is the IP address and here is um, slash 1 with the dot 0 because we specify unit 0 um, because for um, Junos OS you need to create sub interfaces you do not um, go into the physical interface and configure an IP address. You do that from the sub interfaces. Okay. Okay. After we do that, the next step that I want to do is to um, allow OSPF and ping on interface um, gigabit zero one and gigabit zero zero. So the way to do that, um, I want to do an edit security zones security zone trust um, let's say let's go over here then you do want to do a show so that's what we have let's go ahead and just go to tab and do a set security zones security zone then you want to go into the trust zone you want to do interface and then you want to add the interface that you want to um, add over here so I want to add gigabit um, zero I want to do a host bound traffic system services and you want to allow ping then you want to do set uh, you want to do a set you want to do it again security zones security zone trust interface GE um, zero and now what I want to do I want to do host bound but I want to allow a protocol or SPF so now we have allow ping, so we should be able to ping, and also OSPF. Now I want to do what I want to do from gigabit zero 
slash zero slash one is I just want to allow ping because we are not going to do OSPF on this one. So you want to do set security zones, security zone, trust interface, GE one host inbound system services ping. Then you want to commit. Um, so we commit our changes. Let's wait so it doesn't give me an error. Register, PID, good, commit batch, we are looking good. Now let's go ahead and go into this um, firewall and we need to configure three interfaces. Um, the three interfaces are going to allow ping and only two interfaces are going to allow OSPF. So you want to do set interfaces. Let's start with GE0 zero slash zero slash zero unit zero then after that what you want to do is um, you want to do a family init address for this one is 192.168.1.2 slash 24 set interfaces ge one unit zero family init address 172.16.1.1 slash 24 then you want to set up the set interfaces um, GE 2 unit 0 family init address 192.168.2.2 slash 24 great so now we want to al allow um, OSPF on this interface OSPF on this interface so you want to do set security zones security zone trust Interface GE zero host inbound traffic protocol OSPF. Um, then you want to also allow on two. Great. So then you want to also allow instead of protocols, you want to allow system services ping. Oops. Ping. Then you also want to allow ping on. That zero and that one, and that one. There we go. So we have allow ping on that two slash two slash zero and slash one. We allow OSPF on uh, slash two and slash zero. Uh, so we are looking good. Now what I could do is I want to go ahead and commit my changes. Now let's go ahead and go into this last firewall and I haven't logged in yet so let's go ahead and log in um, there's no password or anything so we are going to go into the CLI the configuration mode first you wanna you wanna set a password because we haven't um, created a password here uh, if you don't set the password it won't let you commit so let's go ahead and do set system uh, root authentication plain let's see apps let's go ahead and try that again there we go making sure I get the correct there we go looking good so now let's go ahead and configure set interfaces GE 0 slash 0 slash 2 unit 0 family Init address 192.168.2.1 slash 24. Then you want to do a set security um, zone, security zone. We are going to put it on the trust. That's fine. Um, then you want to do interfaces GE hostbound traffic system ping to allow ping. And then we are going to allow OSPF, so it is a protocol, OSPF. After we do that, let's go ahead and commit our changes. So after that is done, we are now going to configure OSPF. So I'm going to show you how to configure OSPF. Um, so we are going to go into the first, you can start wherever you want to. I want to start from the beginning, from the first VSRX. So the way that you do that is you want to do to edit protocols, OSPF. From over here, you can do a show command. You can see that there would have any 
um, configuration over here. So you want to do a set area zero um, interface GE. Um, so we are going to add GE zero slash zero slash zero dot zero. So you need to add the sub interface. Then you want to add um, the slash one dot zero. And we are going to say this one is going to be a passive interface. And that passive means that we are not going we are not going to share uh, we're not going to connect or try to connect OSPF on this interface. So it is passive. Therefore, we won't be able to connect um, uh, with OSPF. Okay, so I'm just saying do not connect with OSPF. So let's go ahead and commit our changes. Then we are going to go into the second VSRX. Uh, good. So from over here, we're going to edit protocols OSPF. You can do a show to see what we have. We don't have anything. Now we are going to set the area zero interface GE zero slash zero slash zero dot zero. Um, that should be good. And then we are going to also add um, slash two dot zero. And then we are going to add the dot one one. And we are going to say that this one is going to be a passive because we don't want to. We don't want to allow us we have to form an adjacency on that um, interface. Okay, then you can go ahead and commit. After that is done, committing, we are going to go to the last OSPF or to the last um, VSRX, uh, to the last firewall. We are going to edit protocols, OSPF, and we are going to set. Um, we are going to set area zero interfaces GE zero slash zero slash two dot zero. There we go. And then you want to commit. There we go. Commit it. Um, so now the commit has completed. Let's go ahead and go into this first VSRX. And we want to um, view. So if you do an exit and then exit again. So from over here, I want to do a couple show commands um, so we can see um, our OSPF adjacency or our OSPF neighbors. So you want to do show OSPF neighbors. And you can see that we have one neighbor, 192.168.1.2, which is this one over here. You can see where um, we are connected. We are connected via um, interface slash 0.0. .0. The state is full. Here's the ID of this um, the ID of our neighbor of this neighbor you can see the priority is 128 which is a default priority of all of them and you can see the debt the debt is um, uh, the debt is the number of seconds until the neighbor becomes unreachable if we do it again uh, we still only have one as you can see right here but if you go into this VSRX and we do a show neighbor, we should have two neighbors. Okay, so then uh, let me go ahead and s s another show command that we could do is the show route protocol OSPF. Let me do so show route OSPF show route protocol OSPF. And as you can see, we have a couple of um, routes right now we have one for 172.16.1.0 which is this one right here we also have the 192.168.2.0 which is this one right here and then we have this one over here which is the multi um rats uh, and this is the if you google the one and the 224.0.0.5 slash 32 i believe this is how ospf actually um how OSPF shares the uh, their configuration. So if you go to, just go to Google and then do 224.0.0.5. Um, and it, as you can see, it is a multicast address for the open source path first, which is OSPF. Um, and it uses this a multicast address so they can share their information. Looking good. So now 
let's go ahead and do a couple pings so i should be able to ping 172 that uh not 192 172 that 16 that one that two so i'm able to pin this docker right here that is great via ospf um as you can see right here it is in ospf you can see the preference um it, it is called preference um i think it's preference value in juniper in cisco it is called the administrative distance you can see it has a metric of two and also we have another um, route right here to 192.168.2.0 network. So I should be able to ping this VSRX firewall over here, 192.168.2.1. There we go. So I'm able to ping it because I, I, I am allowing um, ping on this VSRX um, interface. So we are looking good. Now let's go ahead and go into this VSRX and I should have, um, so let's do an exit, exit. Then you can do a show OSPF neighbors. You see that I have two neighbors, one on via gigabit um, slash zero dot zero, which is this one over here. And I have another one via slash two dot zero, um, which is this one over here. You can see the ID of the neighbor. So of this neighbor right here, the um, OSPF ID is 172.16.2.1. Um, and then you can see the ID for this VSRX is 192.8.2.1. So let's go ahead and do a show, show route protocol OSPF. Um, you can see that we have one route. We have learned one route. We did not learn this route because we are, uh, it is a DC, it is directly connect connected. So that's why we don't have a route. But we do have a route to a remote um, network, which is this one right here because we are not directly connected to it. But this VSRX is advertising this um, location. So I should be able to ping 1672.16.2.2. There we go. Looking good. Um, so that's how it is configured. You can see the routes and all that good stuff. So now let's go ahead and go to this last um, firewall. Let's go ahead and do top and then exit. Then you do a show or SPF neighbor you can see my only neighbor which is this guy right here via uh, the interface slash 2.0 full state you can see the ID of this VSR X you can see the priority which is 128 and you can see the dead as well all right so if we do now a show routes protocol or SPF you can see that we have we have learned a route to this remote location to this other remote location and also to this other remote location because we're not directly connected to it so we have to actually learn it and you can see the multicast ospf ip address over here and i should be able to paint this docker image and this docker image which are basically linux devices so let's go ahead and ping 172.16.1.2 which is this one right here now i want to ping 172.16.2.2 um that two that two and there we go i should also be able to ping 192.168.1.0 that one network so if i ping 192.168.1.1 i should be able to ping it and there it is so these are for this video guys i hope you guys enjoy this video um and if you guys enjoy this video why don't you guys go ahead and Follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips if you have a Twitter account. If you do not have a Twitter account, go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one. Love you guys. Bye bye.